Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 7th grade concept of volume. This is standard 7.9a in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 39 of the 2019 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So we've got a ring toss game here, usually filled with water, and they're giving us this information. It's a rectangular prism. It's on top of a cylinder. So we've got the rectangular prism completely filled with water. And so we're using this picture of something that's happening in real life, but I guess they're not wanting us to get confused. We're just looking for the volume of the rectangular prism. And what we don't want, let me just put some X's here. We don't need to worry about that cylinder. Uh, we're not trying to find the volume of that cylinder and then add it as, it's, as if it's like a composite shape. We just want this rectangular prism. So that's really what we're looking for, the volume of any prism. It's pretty simple. Base times height. Now, even though we've only got uh, two variables here, base times height, we actually need all three numbers. So this is what our volume of a prism looks like on the seventh grade mathematics chart. Let me show you what we learned way back in fifth grade, right? So the volume of a rectangular prism, that was the only thing we were really looking uh, at in fifth grade. It was the rectangular prism or cube. We weren't looking at triangular prisms. We definitely were not looking at pyramids. So they gave it to you differently. Length times width times height. Now, how can both of those two be equal? Well. You notice we've got these two heights are the same, right? I just do capitals because sometimes that lowercase l looks like a 1. It's always confusing to me. So you see what's different here is the base and the length times width. So this base is actually the area of the base. And they say it like that because sometimes the base is a triangle. Sometimes it's a square. It could be a pentagon. It could be a hexagon. So they're just going to say the area of the base. So since we're dealing with a rectangular prism, we find the base with the length times width. So if we wanted to, right, we could just plug in these three numbers. We can say our length times our width, so that's two times nine. And then we've got our height, so that's 15. And then, let's see, we can just take our, well, you know what, we could do two times nine we can get 18 times 15, or you know what I'd rather do? Check this out. I'd rather kind of regroup these, use the commutative property. I want to multiply those two first. 2 times 15, so that's 30, because now that's going to leave me with 30 times 9. And I know the multiples of 10, 100, or 1,000. Look at that. 9 times 3, right? That is going to be... 27, and then add that zero. So I'm looking like it's 270, but let me just do my 18 times 15 just to double check. So that's going to be 40, 90, 180. Yeah, there's my 270. So I've got my 270 there. So that's using the old school fifth grade equation. So what would have had to have happened if I wanted to use my seventh grade equ equation? Well, all we would have needed to have done would be to figure out the base. So we would have had to figure out that the base is length times width. We would have just had to come to it straight with this 18 uh, times 15. And then we would have done the same thing. So that's all you have to do is you have to kind of find base separately and those two numbers are a fact, so that's easy. Sometimes you have to do a separate multiplication. So our answer there is B. You notice that, look at, uh, my favorite answer is A, 26. Watch what happens if you don't have any idea what to do with the numbers. And you just add. There's your 7, there's your 9, there's your 16. Look, you could just add and get them. But we don't need that. The answer is B. 